Greetings. Today we are going to talk about the man he killed, a very notable anti-war poem, written by Thomas Hardy. Actually, Thomas Hardy was intrigued, and、uh, let me say、uh, he was appalled by war. So you can find the theme of war frequently in his works. The man he killed was published in 1902. And、uh, this date、uh, is very important for us、uh, to perceive the the meaning of the poem fully.、Uh, this date is very important for us because it is the end of the Boer War in South Africa. Many critics、uh, believe that this poem. Uh, conveys an ironic message or attitude regarding war. Thomas Hardy gave us some stage directions to help us understand the setting of this poem fully. He wrote、uh, that the scene is the saddle of the fox in a stage foot lane, so we、um, we per- we we perceive that. This setting is an ordinary one. It is a very common place, and he wrote that. I mean, Thomas Hardy wrote that the characters are the speaker and his friends. The speaker is a returned soldier, and his friends are the natives of the hamlet. And hamlet is the name of a village in England. So, based on this description. We can figure out that the speaker of this poem lived in Dorset, a rural place in England, and、uh, the government. We know、um, the, this fact that the government in that time imposed、uh, many ordinary people、uh, to fight in one of its colonies, South Africa. So the speaker, I mean this soldier.、Uh, Was forced to fight in South Africa against the Boers.、Uh, the Boers、uh, were the Dutch settlers. As you may、uh, remember, we have discussed the, uh, the many uh, historical events during Romantic and Victorian period in England. You know that after the defeat of Napoleon's forces in 19th century, England wrests the control of South Africa. So,、uh, the Boers, I mean the 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 Dutch settlers in South Africa, rebelled against the British governors and their rules. In order to clarify who the Boers are,、uh, let me give you a brief、uh, background information about the Boers and uh, their uh, revolt. Boer is a Dutch name, and it means farmer. And I, and and as I have mentioned earlier. The Boers were the Dutch settlers, the white settlers in South Africa. These white settlers moved into a region across the Orange and Waal rivers, or Waal rivers,、uh, and they took the control of the region. And、uh, more importantly, they enslaved the native people. Actually,、uh, the Boers sought their independence from the Great Britain, and they wanted to be exempt from heavy taxation. However, England could not tolerate any disobedience, so the government tried to win the control of this region, the place where the Boers inhabit. In eighteen Uh, in 1877, I think、uh, the government, the British government, was forced to retreat. Therefore,、uh, the government gave the Boers independence in 1881. Another point to bear in mind is that across the Orange River, diamond and gold were found. So, what was the result? Many foreigners, many strangers, came to seek enormous fortune for themselves. 
as a result, the number of strangers quickly increased. Moreover, the British monarchy had a very serious rival, the German Kaiser who had imperial ambitions of South Africa. So the German Kaiser encouraged the Boers to resist the English troops and get involved in a battle with the British army. Finally, in 1899, a very, uh, let me say, furious war ensued. Uh, but the Boers took full advantage of being familiar with the landscape, fighting a guerrilla war with the British soldiers for three years. Therefore, the British army decided to clear the region part by part, and uh, during this time, the British army uh, the, the British army used a very ferocious uh, innovation, the concentration camp. And I'm sure you know what the concentration camp is. Uh, Well, about 40,000 Boers were captured and imprisoned in the concentration camp by the British army and they were kept under, uh, under uh, the most, uh, let me say, dreadful conditions. In the first stanza, you discover that the action of the poem has already done, and the speaker of this poem is uh, pondering over that action, he's thinking about that action. We call this technique flashback. The speaker imagines himself near some old ancient inn, and this ancient inn doesn't have any name. So it is. It means that it is not a particular place. Pay attention to the diction of uh, this poem, the choice of words. Pay attention to the word uh, nipperkin. Um, by studying the words, the diction, we can conclude that the speaker is not um, uh, let me say an intellectual or complicated person. Uh, he he's not a philosopher. Uh, he he's a very common person. He's an ordinary man. Talking about now, let's. Uh, in the second stanza, we find out that uh, the speaker and uh, uh, another soldier are in a battlefield. Uh, and, uh, and these two soldiers are uh, close enough to each other that they can look into each other's eyes. And uh, both of them shot at each other. One of them died and the other one still lives. Uh, so the speaker um, can remember uh, this sorrowful and lugubrious situation. So we can say that the climax of the poem is this stanza. In the third stanza, I shot him dead because, because it is very important for us. Uh, the word because shows that uh, the speaker is trying to, f uh, to, uh, to find a justification for his act of killing. He tries to justify his um, action. Because he was my foe. Just so. That's it. Just so. That's it. It was not my fault. He was my foe. He was my enemy. My foe, of course, he was. So uh, the speaker needs to convince himself to soothe himself uh, that I did uh, the right thing. I did what I was supposed to do. And it was not my f In the next stanza, the speaker starts thinking about the man he had killed and attributing his own reasons for enlisting in, a war, in, the, in war to the dead soldier. 
they shot at each other and the speaker might have died. We found that the speaker enlisted in war because he was jobless and he sold his property not to achieve a high purpose, not to affirm his face, not to express his loyalty. Rather, um, he, he sold his property, he, he enlisted in war because he wanted to do something. He did it inadvertently without planning he did it without thinking about the war he did it without considering the possible consequences of the war the the, the, the tragic consequences in the last stanza the first line is uh, really important yes quaint and curious war is according to the speaker of this of the poem War is curious and quaint. But what is the meaning of quaint? According to the dictionary, quaint means unusual and attractive in an old-fashioned way. So where can we find uh, something attractive and unusual in an old-fashioned way? Uh, the answer is antique shops. So this is a suitable adjective for things in the antique shops and it, this is not suitable we usually don't use um, uh, this adjective uh, uh, to describe a war another point that we should bear in mind is that quaint um, has two meanings firstly it means wise cunning skillful skilled and expert and uh, this meaning is obsolete uh, out of date we don't use uh, this word with this meaning anymore nowadays secondly it means unusually attractive in the next line the speaker describes the nature of war that you have to kill someone or you will be killed you may kill a man that in other situations you would have a drink with him or you would treat him kindly and friendly. Half a crown means 60 cents or help to, or help to half a crown. So the speaker would help his fellow kindly when he was in need. The speaker would loan his friend money. Uh, so he wants to tell us that his action is universal. Well, to recap, I should say the first stanza is without any resentment and hatred. The speaker talks warmly about an inn, a setting uh, which vividly contrasts the battlefield. It seems that the speaker regrets killing his fellow man as he starts his poem with a wish. He says, if we had met each other in an inn like this one, we would have had a good time together. Unfortunately, they interfaced each other in a different setting where they uh, followed their predetermined fate or roles. What are their roles in the war? Their only possible roles and fates were as enemies. While the speaker was shooting at the other soldier, he noticed that they are not different from each other. The only reason, the only obvious reason, it, to kill that soldier was that they are enemies, they are foes. The speaker ruminates on this fact that the dead soldier came to war involuntarily without knowing about it. They just need job and money. Another point to keep in mind is that the speaker must accept the nature of war. The speaker's justification, reasons, and diction show that he is not sophisticated and he's pondering over such a uh, controversial issue in a very simple way. The speaker is not able to explain the reasons of war, although he pacifies himself with a simple statement that, okay, I killed him because he was my foe, because he was my enemy, his conscience was not soothed. When the speaker uses although, it means that there are more reasons to consider about. The speaker doesn't 
tell us directly that, for example, war is murderous. So it is up to the readers, it is up to us to conclude that, okay, war is callous, war is threatening, war is ruthless and murderous.